$75,000. Now we're, our brains are exploding. We're going through the roof. We're on our way. We're... Let's go! What's going on everyone? My name is Kyle Gillis and today we are talking about how me and my co-founder raised $200,000 as senior engineering students. To give us some structure, I'm gonna be talking about three things. The common ways to raise money for your startup, our funding breakdown of exactly how we got to $200,000 our senior year, and lastly, pivoting our company from an education company to an enterprise software company in a very short amount of time. So the two common ways to raise money when first starting out a company is either raise money from investors, this could be angel investors or traditional VCs, or the second way, which is going the non-dilutive route, and this is easier as a student, um, which is applying for competitions, uh, getting in, and then competing for the grand prize or, or several other amounts of money, or doing the same thing through federal grants. Now there are pros and cons to each of these. I'm gonna quickly just break them down. From our experience, raising money from investors is harder and harder to do as an early stage startup, especially if you're just starting a company and you don't have a lot of traction already or you don't have a lot of experience in the market. A lot of these investors, even if they're angels just looking to give up 25,000, 50,000, 100,000 dollars, they're looking for people who are de-risked. And that's kind of the con to this, is that when first starting your company, you aren't gonna have any of that. Um, you probably won't have any of that for the first year or two. When you're raising money through competitions and grants, what's beautiful is you completely own the company. You're the one going out there, applying, getting in, pitching, and if you win money, then, then that's great. No one's taking any piece of your company. But the most optimal scenario is you start winning these competitions over and over, and you start aggregating small amounts of funds. And if you're a first time founder, this is why I love this method, because when we first got started, we really didn't know a lot about the startup world or the terminology. So joining these small competitions and getting feedback and understanding their verbiage and getting out there and just honestly getting your hands dirty and getting involved and talking with investors at these competitions, it gives you a lot of experience up front. Sure. We wanted a cool product. So we made a drone STEM kit. So we have drone STEM kits, educational video, learning to think and act like scientists and engineers. Solving real world problems. We plan to sell our kids to both. Best way of probably doing this is looking at this as a as a video gaming having levels, right? And this is what we ended up doing. We did level one of the local competitions, level two of the national competitions, level three of the federal grants um, and some different types of grants. And then level four, which is the first thing I talked about, we went out and got investor funding. As I said before, it's harder to get investor funding now than ever for early stage startups. But the beautiful part is, is if you did level one, two, and three, you now have all of this understanding about how they think. You've de-risked yourself because you got involved in one competition so you can use that as leverage. You have grant funding, you can use that as leverage. You hopefully are now starting to get into incubators. That falls somewhere in here, right? And you can use that as leverage. You're now looked at as a de-risked company or at least a little more. And it's easier to pitch to investors now. So these actually kind of work in tandem if you're doing it correctly. All right, so let's do the funding breakdown of exactly how we got to the $200,000. I'm gonna be using the same level system that I just kind of described. So for our level one, we got a $1,000 honor school grant through West Virginia University at the school level, hyper local. And when you win $1,000 as a senior student, to us, it was literally the world. Like it literally paid for all of the materials we needed to got, kind of get our STEM kit started that we were making at the time. We literally thought we just hit, hit the big time pretty much. But over the next six to 12 months, we were participating in our school-wide entrepreneurship competitions. And don't think of these as huge competitions. All these people are, are applying. Think of this as, you know, there's a few posters around um, the business school and there's a few people promoting this idea. And then you show up and there might've been, you know, 20 to 30 people that applied and then 10 people to 15 people who ended up participating. And through the, that six to 12 month period and participating in those competitions, we ended up winning about $7,500 um, worth of competitions and a little bit of grant funding from them as well. So $7,500, if you're starting a business, I don't know if that's a lot of money to you or a little, but to us at the time, when we would win a $500 competition and then a $1,500 competition, it was literally like we just hit the lottery. <laughs> Let's go. 
It was like, this is gonna fund all of our STEM, 10 STEM kits. This is gonna help us get to a pilot phase. This is a huge deal for us. And so if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I wanna raise $200,000, that wasn't our mentality at the time. It was, we just need a little bit of money to kind of get this thing started. Let's go into our level two. Our level two was the West Virginia business plan competition, statewide competition, a bit bigger. Hello, My name is James Barnes. This is Kyle Lewis, and we are going to be and then we applied for so many national competitions and we got into a lot of them. We got into five, six, or seven of them. And we worked out a deal with the school to pretty much pay for our flights and stays if we got into these national competitions because we're representing our school, right? It makes sense. First of all, we literally wouldn't physically be here if it wasn't for the launch line. Great point. Currently headed to Houston, home of the Rice Internal Qualifier. Um, so we got into all these national competitions and we all ended up only getting, I think, $1,500 from TCU Values and Ventures. We, we went, we flew to five or six of them and I think we got $1,500, but I still think it's mega worth it. Why is it mega worth it? Because we got tons of feedback. The competition, since we were winning all our school ones, were going up, up, up. The quality of investors that were going there, the critical feedback we were getting, the people who were questioning what we're doing, I mean, it, it, the quality was way different, way different league. So this was a big deal. You have to go through this step. You have to get out of your little bubble at some point and go to the next level. So just to reiterate, the total amount of money on that on that second stage was West Virginia Business Plan Competition. In total, we ended up getting 15,000 and then 1,500 for the TCU Values and Ventures. Now on level three. Level three is kind of more of the big well area. It's where you're graduating from local competitions to national to, to some grant funding. That's not like the honor school grants that are more like what's meant for deep research, et cetera. But you have to be clever here, guys. You gotta be able to work yourself into these things. So the two grants that we got kind of through the school level was a venture well grant, where if you add up phase one and phase two and all the money together, we ended up getting $25,000. And then National Science Foundation i grant, which was $50,000. So there you go, $75,000. Now we're, to us, we are literally, our, we are, our brains are exploding. We're going through the roof. We're on our way. We're, we're getting ready. We're thinking about how we're gonna sell our company already. Shouldn't be, that's, that's our mentality, right? We're trying to figure out these problems. Um, so these are, these are big grants that you guys can be pursuing if you're in school now, which is why I said you have a lot of resources if you're a student right now. They're pouring money into infrastructure for startups right now, guys. And that wasn't fast. You don't apply to VentureWell or NSF and, and just get money in a few weeks. You don't even get it in a few months. To get into the national i program, we literally had to drive from West Virginia to Cornell, stay the night, uh, well, stay, stay the night, stay the week, and participate in their short course program, right, which qualifies you for the national program. You don't get anything for the short course program. They aren't paying for us to go up there. We were just like, we gotta find the closest one. So we literally just overnight, Email the people at Cornell said, hey, can we come to Cornell and, and participate in your short course program? Because we don't have one near us and we need it ASAP. We don't want to wait a few a year to get into one near us. We need to come to you guys and do it in a few weeks here. So they said, yes, we did that, qualified us for the national program, did the national program, got into it, and that's how we got that money. And this whole progress process took probably four to six months, I think. It took quite some time. All right, let's go up one more step now. And we're not talking about investor funding. Let's talk about how we got an Air Force contract. It's, it's deliberated whether it's a contract or a grant. So I kind of lumped it under grants here for the first phase. So there's this thing called SBIR STTRs, which are Small Business Innovation Research Grant or STTR, I don't know what it is. Um, but the idea is that you can apply to work with the Air Force um, when they're looking for technologies. And because you just went through level one, level two, level three, especially level three, NSF, I-Corps, VentureWell, federally funded money is funding your startup now. The Air Force is even more interested because they're like, oh, you must be working on something that's kind of deep tech. And if you can align it with this application and help solve some of our problems, then we'll give you money to work with us. So that's how we got our next chunk of $50,000. We got $50,000 to basically do a phase one STTR through the Air Force AFWorks program. And you ready for this? We got another 50,000, right? So now what did we get for this level? $100,000 now. We're, we got $50,000 from West Virginia, the, the state, the government. 
um, they paid us $50,000. They matched the Air Force $50,000 because they had a, a special program going on where if you applied for a SBR, STR and were granted it, they would, they would match it. And why did they do this? It's just because um, there was so low success rate in the state or application rates in the state that they were like, man, how do we incentivize more people in our state to do this? So I'm not sure how much other states are doing it, um, but I know that our state did it and it was massively helpful for us. I mean, it's another $50,000, guys. It helps you employ another person for an entire year. Um, so this was that was all a big deal for us. So right there, that's how we hit our $200,000. And this was from December 18 to about December 19, maybe a little past it, but 90, 90 to 95% of all this took place our senior year as engineering students. It's crazy. I mean, it's, it's gonna be hectic for you. But the idea of if you're really dedicated, if you're really hustling, this is kind of the mentality. All right, so lastly, let's talk about pivoting our company. Now the word pivoting is so overused in the entrepreneurship landscape, it's disgusting, it makes you wanna vomit, it's like everyone looks for another term for it, but it's the term, let's just let's just use it. So pivoting our company, why, why did we do it? Why did we have to do it, uh, et cetera, et cetera? How did we go from such an extreme to such a different extreme? A lot of it was the feedback from these competitions. This is why I, I, I lean on this process so heavily. And yes, if you can just grab investor money, fantastic. But if you're not used to the process of startups and you aren't in the entrepreneurship landscape, this is a great way to get involved and get an understanding. So I think we started at the state level, right? We never knew about enterprise software uh, when we first started, right? December, 2018, we didn't know anything about enterprise software or, or what we would build it for, whatever. So you couldn't, we couldn't have started there. We started with STEM education kits, that one right there actually. And, and our idea got to the point where we were like, okay, how do we do something really groundbreaking? We were like, we wanna give these $100 plus kits where kids are coding Arduinos and putting them on drones and programming and flying them. We wanna go from that, which is expensive to make, expensive to buy and schools don't have money. We wanna go from that to, to giving them to every school for free. How do you do that? You have to provide value in another way. So we started attaching air quality sensors. We're like, what happens when we sell, who can we sell air quality data to from schools all around the country, all around the world? And we thought this was a huge game changing idea. And this is the idea that we were selling to get into a lot of these national competitions. And we were working really hard, understanding the pain points of schools, understanding the pain points of the air quality world, which is a whole different thing, right? Where do you, I don't know anything about air quality, do you? But we eventually get to the point where we have to make a decision well, as we're digging deep on these pain points and trying to solve, solve problems of going towards the education side or the air quality side. And we didn't make a conscious decision. I think it just kept naturally leading that way. We got to the point where we were going from the STEM education kits to, a real industrial sized drone, $5,000 plus DJI drone, where we're trying to use to collect air quality data um, to just being a software company. And there's a lot of steps in between there, guys. But those, these are the kind of big pivots we made. We went from the STEM kits to STEM kits with air quality sensors to STEM kits with air quality sensors on an industrial drone and we're still giving the kids for free. It, it's super complex business model. And then we're like, okay, let's put the EDU aside for a minute. And our final pivot that happened probably a year or more ago is into a pure software play. We took all the knowledge we gained from the past six months, eight months about the oil and gas industry. Using this federal grant funding, we traveled the world, country to country to country, talking to customers, trying to better understand their pain points. And we used all that information still today. In, in building our product for the, for the industry. And what that product is, is it's a SaaS platform um, that allows companies in the oil and gas industry to better understand leaks across their assets, aggregating that data, making sense of it, providing analytics. To get to the real point here though, you just have to not be romantic. You can't sit here and say, I just want to do, to do this, right? And not listen to your customers, not listen to investors, not listen to people in the industry. You have to really buckle down and say, I'm not gonna be romantic about these ideas. I'm gonna set out to solve specific problems or certain people's problems, and I'm not stopping until that day comes, and I'm gonna move as fast as humanly possible. And that's exactly how you go from being a STEM education company in, in December 2018 to being an enterprise SaaS company in December of, 
of 2019, January of 2020. I really appreciate you guys tuning in for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm gonna have tons of stories from this entire journey that I'm bringing to the platform. Leave a comment, let me know what you wanna see. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you.